I'm going to be now um, demonstrating the lab skill of assessing lungs and chest. Hello, my name is Carolyn Merriman and I'm going to be your nurse today. Can you please tell me your full name? Lita Jones. All right, let me check your armband. Can you tell me your birth date? 4-19-67. All right, thank you. Um, I want you to know that I just washed my hands before I came in the room. So today, Ms. Jones, I'm going to be um, looking at your lungs and or checking your lungs, making sure that your, your breathing is, is okay. Um, and so I want to get started by just having you just kind of looking at your chest wall and how you're breathing, okay? Okay. And I'll give you instructions for this. So, um, can you take a deep breath? Okay, I observed her breathe in and out, and it looked symmetrical as she did that. What I'm also going to be doing is just looking um, to see if I see any kind of bumps or anything. Um, I also am looking at this, the size of her chest. So what I'm going to notice right away is that, and I'll put my hands on her, is that the anterior chest wall, I'm gonna have her sit up a little bit to do this. So the anterior chest wall, I'm putting my hand on her front of her chest, and I'm putting the back of my hand on the back. So the anterior chest wall to the posterior chest wall is this size, and it's less than transverse. So that's what we're looking for is AP is less than transverse. So there's no deformities that I can see in the anterior chest wall at this point, and that's called the chest wall configuration. So AP is less than transverse. Size of the wall from front to back is less than transverse. If it were the same or equal, that could be a person that would have respiratory problems, maybe chronic bronchitis or emphysema. I'm also going to check the placement of her trachea, and I can see that she has a trach hole, but um, if she did not, then I would be putting my finger at the st uh, sternal notch and then just feeling that the trachea is midline. So you could put one finger on each side and then just m measuring or filling for that trachea. Okay. Now the other thing that I would like to do is just make sure there's no, no lesions on her chest or any uh, discoloration. So you can be glancing at that. Now this is a female, so I'm going to look on both Keeping her covered, I'm going to look on the top of her chest, and then later I will be raising up the, the, um, her gown. Um, you also would want to check her respiratory rate and pattern. And so I'm watching her breathe, and I would go ahead and say, okay, rate and pattern. I would count. And if it looks like she has regular respirations, then I would count for probably 30 seconds. If it were irregular, I would count for a full minute. So after counting her respirations, I see that she's at a 16, and her respirations are even, without distress, or regular, even. Those are some of the terms that you would use. Um, all right, so um, I have also want to um, see if there's any tenderness on her chest wall, so you just take your hand and then just ask, are you having any tenderness right now? No. Okay, anywhere on your chest wall? Okay, and then underneath also, again, this is a female, but you just do a general palpation um, of, of that chest wall. Um, now, what I also can do is something called a, a percussion note. Now, it's easier to do that percussion note, honestly, on the back of the chest wall, but percussion, if you remember, is kind of a higher level skill. But what I'll be doing is you take your finger and make sure you're in between the ribs, and then you, you tap between the ribs. And if you tap between the ribs in the lungs, what is that note called? Well, if you have a normal note for, for percussion, it's called resonance in the lungs. The term is called resonance. If you hit something that sounds like that, which is dull, you've probably hit a rib. But in between, Sounds a little bit more hollow, of course, this is a mannequin. It would be a little higher pitch on a real person. But that's what you do for percussion. Find yourself in between those ribs, tapping, and it's better to tap on your finger placed flat on the person's skin surface. Now we're ready, Ms. Jones, to 
listen to your lungs. So what I'd like to do is have you please take a deep breath in and out um, every time I put my stethoscope in place. And so um, I will be doing eight spots here on your on the front of your um, chest, and then I'll be doing the same on the back, um, except a few more. Okay, so what I'm going to have you do then is take a deep breath, and I'm going to start above the clavicle because there's lung tissue there. Take a deep breath. Okay, I'm going across to compare sides. That's two. I'm going to come down to about the second intercostal space. Take a deep breath, please. Now I'm going to go to across, second intercostal space. With a female, you probably could come down still with your gown and still protecting her privacy to about the fourth to intercostal space. Thank you. Have another one, please. You let me know if you get dizzy, we can rest. Okay, I'm gonna cover her now. And to do the lower ones underneath her breast, I'm going to keep her draped, pull up the gown. Wanna make sure that she's comfortable, cover her up really well. And I'm going to do a couple others. Take a deep breath. And one more, please. Okay, thank you very much. Your lungs are clear in the front, but I will need to also check in the back. Okay, so Ms. Jones, now if you can please sit up and sit forward. What I'm gonna do is check your back for any uh, deformities. So if you can raise up, please. Perfect. Okay, so what I'm doing now is I'm also looking at her spine and I'm looking to see if there's any deformities and I don't see any. Her spine looks straight to me. I can palpate along the spine for any tenderness. Does that hurt? No. Okay. Now what I'd like to do is um, listen to your lungs. So have you lean a little forward. I'm going to keep you covered. So let me get my stethoscope ready. I'm going to start on the left side, right above the shoulders, because there's a little lung tissue there. Take a breath. Going across to compare. Take, take your time, let me know if you get dizzy. I'm gonna come in, I don't wanna hit the scapula, so I'm coming in towards the spine. Take a deep breath. That's my third sight, coming right across. That's my fourth sight, coming down. Make sure you're not on ribs. That's my fifth sight, coming straight across. That's sixth, now I'm coming down. Seventh, and I can spread out a little bit because I'm underneath the scapula. That's eight, now I'm gonna go to the lower bases for nine is down here. 10, lower bases. Very good. Now I have one more site that I need to get, so it's going to be underneath your right arm. So I'm going to ask you to raise your right arm and under the mid-axillary line about the fifth intercostal space, I'm going to put my stethoscope. Okay, one more please. Excellent. And that um, is going to get the middle lobe on the right side. Let me go ahead and re-tie your gown. Um, the other thing that I didn't do on the back that you could do and actually you'd, you'd get a lot of um, great sounds would be you could also percuss in between the ribs and I kind of go back and forth to do that but in, in, a, in between the ribs again to hear the resonance which is the normal sound on percussion. Alright so at this point um, I didn't hear any wheezes or rells or crackles, so you can lay back down. Um, this concludes my lung and thorax exam. Do you have any questions? No. All right, thank you very much. So you saw um, a, an exam that's kind of like a thorough exam, but I wanted to tell you what's on your final performance exam as a part of this. On the final performance exam, you are going to show us that you've inspected the chest, 
that you've looked anterior to posterior is less than transverse. Those are two critical things that you'll be doing. You will also be recording uh, chest, that the chest is symmetrical expansion. And I think I forgot to show you how to do that. But what you'll be doing is, it really helps if it's in the back, but you'll be putting your hands together or over the, the lungs and with your thumbs closed and have the person take a deep breath. And when they take a breath in and out, you're gonna watch the rise and fall of your hands that, they've, that they're symmetrical. If the person had some kind of lung problem or collapsed lung, one would go up, the other one would stay down. So symmetrical chest expansion is where on the back, after you've touched for tenderness, put your hands together over their rib cage, have them take a deep breath in and out, and that's something that you can practice. Um, the other thing that you would do then is you are going to, um, you're going to listen, and I want to make sure that I tell you the exact m amount that you need for your performance exam. So you are going to auscultate six to eight sites, lung sites, or breath sounds in the front is what the requirement is, and eight to ten in the back, and then one under the right arm. So be sure you study your, um, your uh, rubric and your what's expected for the head-to-toe performance exam. So this concludes thorax and lungs.